Well, New Zealand has a, um, a health and safety framework, including statutory provisions that um, could be used to address violence and harassment in the world of work, but we haven't seen that happening. Um, partly, I think, it's poorly understood, the issue, by our um, central organisations, and partly they, they struggle with um, under-resourcing, and it affects their capacity to um, address occupational safety and health issues in a, in a range of areas, including violence. So that's the big concern for us. Um, unions have been working to try and publicise the issues of you know, all types of violence and harassment in the world of work and to try and get more media attention around those issues. New Zealand's had um, sexual harassment provisions in its law for over 30 years. Um, and it's a slightly odd situation with a, sort of a dual track process. So we have provisions in both employment law and in discrimination and human rights law. The employment law provisions have never well been, never been well respected. They're not really very gender responsive and users um, have not had confidence in them. Uh, the human rights provisions, however, have at times been used and, and used well. For those of us who, who were around at that time, we felt we made good progress in sexual harassment issues in the 80s and 90s. In recent years, though, there's been a feeling that maybe things have gone backwards a little bit. Uh, our law hasn't been reviewed in all that time, and you know some of the gains that have been made, perhaps in workplace cultures, have possibly been eroded more recently. So there's certainly a need for more work to be done in, in that area and, and unions are picking up that challenge um, going forward. Look, I think there's a, we think there's a very big role to play um, uh, in, for unions in really taking full advantage of this opportunity that the, the new instruments give us. Um, quite recently in New Zealand, unions have been very instrumental in um, in the area of domestic violence in the, and its impacts on the workplace. So we've had uh, the public sector unions, in particular the Public Service Association, has um, introduced claims relating to flexible working and paid leave into its bargaining and succeeded in getting some of those initiatives in some um, key public sector collective agreements. That has then um, boosted the campaign for statutory protections which would be extended to a broader group of workers um, and last year we succeeded in getting domestic violence um, provisions in legislation. So what we now want to do is do something similar in relation to the instruments and actually use these as, for unions to use these as a tool in their strategies in a similar way to what we've done around domestic violence. So looking at both collective agreement um, and statutory interventions that will address this. And we're really hopeful that the, um, that the new convention recommendations will be a, a key part of that strategy.